Well, I'm joined by Graham Stringer, MP for Blakely and Broughton. Um, Graham, uh, West Streeting is potentially a star of the future in the, in the Labour Party, I think. He's brilliant on the floor of the House of Commons. He's not been in the House very long, mm -hmm. but it, the House pays attention to him on both sides because he addresses problems intelligently and analytically. I don't always agree with him, but the House uh, recognises his ability. And I think on the NHS, uh, he is saying some radical things, and most of which I, I, I would agree with. What we've got to remember, and he used the word the NHS isn't a shrine, what we've got to remember mm. is the NHS is a practical project to provide universal health care uh, free of charge at the point of need, paid by the taxpayer, uh, so that everybody gets it when they need it. And that isn't happening. In that sense, we haven't got an NHS at the moment for the 7 million people on the waiting yeah. list, the people who are waiting hours in A&E. Uh, the NHS doesn't exist. So I think it's quite... If you ask the opposite of what Wes is saying, could I say to one of my constituencies who needed a hip replacement or some other operation, you, I don't believe in the private sector. You stay in pain uh, for 12 months because of my ideological views. I wouldn't be prepared to say that to a constituent. If there was a way of buying capacity, either in this country or elsewhere, mm -hmm. that, that relieves that... A person of pain and provides the obligation that the Labour Party has and government should have uh, to provide health care when it's needed, then I'd pay that money. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Because actually, as you say, the point of the NHS is that the health care is free at the point of delivery. Yes. The system that delivers it isn't really the point, is it? It isn't the point. Personally, yeah. I'm a Labour politician. I believe uh, in the public sector, I think it works should work and often does work more uh, in a more coordinated way with the democratic uh, institutions in this country. When you've got the private sector delivering, you sometimes get different priorities. But the key point is people should get health care when they need it. Yeah, and the private sector, of course, though, is, is very quick to adapt. You know, if it sees there is demand, it can move more quickly, perhaps, than a state-run organisation. So, you know, maybe if a Labour government does these things, it can start to be actually surprise us. Yeah. I would see it as a short-term measure. Tony Blair did it, of course. I know he did. Uh, and nobody complained because the waiting list went down, unlike what they've been doing for the last uh, few years, which is skyrocketing. For those that choose to pay for private health insurance... You know, it's funny, isn't it? Sunak couldn't answer that question. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Margaret Thatcher had no difficulty. She said she was asked the question that he was asked. Do you have private health care? She said, yes, I choose to spend my money as I choose to spend my money. End of story. I mean, the argument that I've always made, Graham, is that actually we should be encouraging people who can afford it to take out private health insurance because that relieves the burden on the National Health Service. I can see that argument. I don't completely agree with it. I think that if you want a universal uh, service, it is better if it is good enough so that everybody uses it and uses the benefit uh, of it. Uh, if you have alternative um, structures in, in a big way, uh, then there is a limited amount of kit equipment. There is a limited amount of uh, trained surgeons, doctors, nurses, and you begin to detract uh, from the NHS just because of the size uh, of the uh, the people who have but the ability free, to. But help in a free it. country, people have, I mean, people should be able to make that choice. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Absolutely. No, no. And I agree with you. You know, Sunak should come clean. Now, very interesting. Tortoise Media, in conjunction with Sky, producing lists of figures of MPs' outside earnings and donations and gifts to members of Parliament. By the way, folks, I'm not suggesting for a moment this is like the European Parliament. <laughs> I'm not suggesting there are suitcases. This issue of MPs' second incomes, one or two MPs earning a lot of money. Uh, how, where do you stand on this? I think there is a problem. I don't think it is uh, as usually portrayed the fact that Theresa May, who is not a particularly good Prime Minister, but is a very good backbencher, as it turns out, that she's earning more than two million mm. uh, a year. I don't think it's about the quantum. I don't even think it's about the time. I think it's whether there is a conflict of interest. If I, I go to see government ministers fairly 
uh, regularly to say government policies are bad for industry, bad for business uh, in my constituency. Usually the re regulatory regime is burdensome and difficult and they want it changing. Yeah. And I think that's part of my job uh, as an MP. If I go and that industry is paying me whatever, 50,000 a year, then I think I'm not fit well, to do my job. And this is the Owen Patterson uh, Yeah, I'm not problem. fit to do my job because yeah. who am I representing? Yeah. My constituents who want jobs yeah. or am I representing the yeah. business yeah. who want profits? Yeah, there must That's be where no the conflict. problem is. Yeah, there must be no conflict. Now, these donations are very, very interesting. It would appear that Qatar, uh, since the last election, have given away getting on for £300,000 in gifts to various MPs, all sorts of lobby groups on immigration elsewhere. And one particularly interesting one, you know, one organisation, um, MPM Connect, who appear to have no staff, no website, registered at an office where they're not known, have given big sums of money to Yvette Cooper, Wes Streeting and Dan Jarvis. I'm not suggesting for a moment there's any corruption here, but it's pretty opaque, isn't it? Yes. I, I only read it. Uh, somebody sent me uh, that uh, news piece yeah. about two hours ago, and they asked me, "Did I know about it?" The answer was no. No. But I think in all these things, transparency is the issue. Who is actually sending the money? That, that's obviously an accountancy uh, front to, to send it, and it's coming from somebody else. We should know uh, who that is, and we should not have foreign money coming into. Uh, the yeah, the Qatari stuff. Yeah. The, the Qatari stuff doesn't look good, does it? That, it doesn't. Uh, that, that's that's wrong. Yeah, Graham Stringer, as ever, thank you for your thoughts. And there we are. What a funny old world, isn't it? Where the Labour Party can embrace using the private sector to get us out of this mess, and the Tory Party appear to be embarrassed, almost ashamed about it.